What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update like we do in every single video. We're gonna be talking about an article that I read on Yahoo Finance explaining what could have caused the green day that we saw today in the stock market. And we're gonna talk about a red trade that I made today where I went wrong, what mistake I made, and you know what I learned from this. So before we do talk about this trading update, this market update, for all you new viewers out there, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. And if you guys want to be in contact with me and about 335 other investors and traders on a day-to-day -day basis, feel free to join that Discord group chat. It's very helpful in there, guys. We're talking about trading, investing, stocks, strategies, news, and just networking with each other to become the best traders and investors possible. So if you guys want to be a part of it, again, all of those are linked down below in the description box. And let's get started with today's video. So I'm sure you guys know by now the markets today had a very strong day. The Dow Jones was up about 500 points at the peak. I believe the S&P was up about 40 45 to 50 points at its highest point and uh, the Nasdaq was actually up about 150 points at the peak so they were all up almost two percent on the day at around noon 1 p.m eastern standard time and from there guys we broke the pattern and then we broke down and uh, pretty much downtrended for the rest of the day. So let's just take a look at what's going on on these technicals so we can get a better understanding of where the overall market is moving. So judging off the S&P, guys, we've been talking about this in every single video, right? This one's trading in more of a horizontal pattern with the support being right around here at about 2630 with the resistance being at about 2800 to about $2,815. So I was talking about in yesterday's video that we've been consolidating at the support for a couple of trading days and that we could potentially see a green day today and that's exactly what ended up happening and let's take a little bit closer look at what's going on so what I'm keeping an eye on very closely for the S&P and the Dow Jones we'll see the technicals on the Dow Jones right after this is this 50 simple moving average guys and this is a resistance point that is very important because it's been a resistance point in the past so let's just take a look closer at what's going on under this 50 simple moving average so take a look at what happened a couple of weeks ago right Let's just take a look here. We had a very strong couple of green days after the low at about 2630. We pulled back and we're having a very similar reaction as to what's going on right now in the S&P. We pulled back, right? We had a couple of green days in a row and then we got rejected by that 50 simple moving average pushing us down to another low. That's a very similar situation that we're in right now, right? We sold off just like we did here. We popped up, got rejected just like we did back here. And now we're starting to push up a little bit, right? Just like we did here. A couple of days in the green, a couple of days in the green, and then we got rejected back here a couple of weeks ago, which could potentially happen again, in my personal opinion, which is why I'm watching this rejection zone. And just judging off the latter half of the trading day today, guys, you know, we noticed that there is a strong red candlestick forming under that 50 SMA, which actually is falling deeper than this green candlestick that formed earlier on in the day. So this is something, in my personal opinion, to be keeping a very close eye on in terms of the technicals for the S&P because, again, we always do these market updates to dictate what we're going to be trading. And if the markets are going to be pushing red tomorrow, that's going to change our philosophy, you know, rather than if the markets we're going to be pushing green we'll be having a different philosophy in that point so it's always great to have an understanding of what is going on in the overall markets and the indexes before trading so even off this 180 chart guys we can see 
you know, we can see this is a strong rejection zone based off of the past. And just looking at the 20-day, one-hour chart, we can see it's getting rejected right under that 50 SMA as well. And we'll see in the Dow Jones, it's a very similar situation. So looking at the Dow Jones, guys, it's a very similar uh, scenario in terms of the technicals. Judging off the 20-day, one-hour chart, we're getting rejected by the 50 simple moving average. And, uh, you know, again, very similar situation with the S&P 500 here. But what I want to note for you guys is that, you know, the past three trading days, we can see here, it's still technically on that higher high, higher low pattern. So, you know, for me to play these market ETFs that go up in price when the markets sell off, I would love to see, you know, the Dow at least break back down below to this level, with, uh, pre preferably, you know, right around this level right here, which was that previous support. So that would be a break of this higher high, higher low trend. And again, very similar thing on the S&P guys. We can see that here, right? You know, I would love to see a break of that trend. And if we just look at the five day, five minute guys, we can see technically, you know, it hasn't really broken that trend quite yet. It pushed up for that higher high here, and now it's still technically at a higher low. So for us to see a break below this level would be a very good sign that the S&P, the Dow is going down in price, you know, continuing the, the, the correction that, that it's been in since the beginning of October. So keep an eye on these levels, guys. Keep an eye on the 50 S. SMA on both the uh, you know the, the Dow and the uh, what's it called the uh, SMP because those are very similar in terms of the technicals here right and the Nasdaq a little bit different in terms of technicals but we'll get into that in a second here but you know in terms of the 180 on the Dow Jones guys again it's making lower highs it's making lower lows and the fact that we're getting slowly rejected by here you know this 50 SMA that could eventually push it down to another lower low. But again, we have to be very patient here and keep an eye on these smaller time frames to see if it does break this trend and, you know, break the support at the 180 SMA here on this five day, five minute chart. So just take a look, just to take a look now at the NASDAQ guys, this one in terms of technicals guys. It's a little bit different than the Dow Jones and the S&P, right? But we are getting rejected here by the 180 simple moving average, which has been a rejection zone. It's been a resistance in the past here, here. We broke above it here, but then we got, you know, crushed back down below it to that support. We bounced up now and we're getting rejected again, which would be a lower high from the previous. So if we do get rejected here, guys, and start to head back south down to that support level, this could be the continuation of the lower low pattern in terms of you know the nasdaq but the positive thing right now in the markets is that the trade war tension is slowly starting to lighten up based off of this article that i read on yahoo finance and this could have been you know one of the reasons why we had a pretty strong green day today and, and the reason why a bunch of the large caps did very well today did you guys see facebook facebook's actually breaking out of that 180 sma resistance on the 180 chart which has been a strong resistance over the past couple of months right it's slowly breaking out of that and we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes but before we do guys you know this news is breaking some of these uh, resistance points in the large cap stocks it's slowly starting to uh, you know change the momentum but again the tensions are still there just because they're lightening a little bit just because uh, you know we're getting a sense of maybe an agreement between Trump and China um, you know, it's still it's still a very risky time in the markets, in my personal opinion. Not risky, but it's still a bunch of tension. Even though we got this little slight relief of tension, the tension is still there, right? You guys know what I'm saying here. You got to be very careful still, in my personal opinion. But, you know, this was an article that was published today. Stocks jump on signs of trade talk progress right u.s equities tracked a global rally and closed higher on wednesday as a slew of reports pointed to softening of trade tensions the s p okay we already know all this 0.5 percent rise for the s p the dow up 0.9 or that was the nasdaq actually up 0.9 percent and uh the dow up 0.6 stocks added to gains following a wall street journal report that china is planning to open up access to foreign companies and move away from its original staunch made in china 2025 plan very good plan right there guys uh you know very good that we're seeing this type of news from china earlier president trump 
uh, said on Tuesday in an interview with Reuters that China was buying a tremendous amount of U.S. soybeans, a commodity that has been at the center of trade disputes. Trump added that Washington and Beijing are already in trade talks by telephone and that more meetings are between envoys of the two countries are likely. And this is another big note right here, guys. This comes as China is preparing to cut tariffs on U.S. made cars to 15% from 40%, according to a Bloomberg report. And another, and another move indicating progress toward a resolution to the U.S.-China trade war. And just like I've been talking about in every single video, guys, the stock market has a lot of tension and a lot of doubt. And what does the stock market not like? It does not like tension. It does not like doubt. It does not like uncertainty. So the fact that news like this came out, right, what I just read to you guys, this relieves some of that and more people are willing to buy. Again, it's a psychological game. It's emotional, guys. When people are tied in to short-term emotion, short-term news, you know, this affects stock prices in the short term. You know, people, a lot of people, most people out there don't have a long-term vision for the stock market. Most people are not disciplined, right? So the fact that you, they see this news, they just buy based off of this news rather than you know, buying when the stock would be at a cheaper price or in other different times, right? So it's kind of an odd, odd scenario here. Uh, you know, again, very psychological game in terms of the stock market, very emotional driven for most people out there. And, you know, the whole idea, in my personal opinion, guys, is to not act on emotion rather than, you know, uh, acting on strategic, strategic moves and uh, strategic buy points when stocks are undervalued if you're looking to be a long-term uh, investor. So that's what we're looking at based off of this little Yahoo Finance article. This could have been what pushed up the markets today, again, due to a little bit of a relief in the tensions with China and uh, Trump. So now that we talked about that, let's talk about what I did today in terms of my trading, guys. Again, if you're part of that group chat on Discord, if you... Uh Actually, no, I didn't post it on my Instagram story, but if you were paying attention earlier in this video, I took a red day, and as you read in the title, I took a red day today in the overall stock market with my trade in TVIX, and I'm going to talk about that right now very quickly, and uh, you know, TVIX is one that I've been trading in and out of, and it's about time that I took a loss, because not trying to sound cocky or anything, guys, because that is not what I promote on this channel. I am not a person to uh, you know show off or be cocky whatsoever. That is not my style at all, but I have been having pretty good amount of green days in a row so the fact that i had a red day today it's uh pretty much uh kind of uh what's it called even though i am humble already it's humbling to me to have a little red day now to bite me in the butt a little bit to teach me that every day is not going to be a green day although i already knew this it's nice getting this um What's it called? It's nice getting this reminder, you know, when you've been having a couple green days in a row, having a red day is a nice little slap back to reality, a bite in the butt. And I'm glad that it happened to me today because I, again, not trying to sound cocky. I've been having a, a couple of green days in a row over these past uh, couple trading days, but in TVIX guys, I took my little 2% loss today on TVIX and I'm going to show you guys exactly where this happens. So the S&P 500 again opened up 30 points, 35 points to begin the day and we saw it slowly starting to drop, right? And this is what I saw in yesterday's trading which allowed me to profit about 7% on TVIX and the fact that it was kind of repeating itself, right? We started to see the sell off, the break below the EMA, right? This kind of gave me an incentive to trade or put a little bit of money, slowly start to scale into TVIX. And that's exactly what I ended up doing, guys. I got in at about $50. I believe it was about like $50.60. And it was a little bit late. And my personal, uh, my personal position was a little bit late because we do see... 50-60 is, uh, it might have been 50-50 because 50-60 is right at the peak. Yeah, I think it was like 50-50 right before this peak out. Literally, I got in at the worst time, right? I got in 50-50 and, uh, you know, took that 2% loss and it ended up being a very bad trade because, again, 
We saw the S&P, guys. It was making higher highs, higher lows to start off the day. And this was just simply a dip in the S&P where I ended up taking a position, right? It was just a dip. And then we pushed up to another higher high. And uh, this is when I pretty much cut my losses in this range when the S&P was popping up. Because again, for those of you guys that don't know, when the S&P is going up, TVIX is going down and vice versa, right? So I got in here, I jumped the gun a little bit, right? We bounced on the S&P, giving me a 2% loss on TVIX. And, you know, stop loss... Stop loss orders are really lifesavers, guys, because if I didn't have a stop loss here, I would have lost more money than I did, right? From 50-50 down to about 2%. Let's see where that put me, just to give you guys some perspective here. So that put me at the loss right below this uh, 180, then 50 SMA crossover there. But if I didn't have that, I would have lost 5% even more on that trade, right? But we do see now we're swinging back up. And I would have made money if I actually held the whole day. But again, that's not what I do, right? I'm not I'm not uh, truly a, a uh, like extremely risky trader. I'm more conservative. So I usually like to cut my losses pretty quick, right? If I see a stock ETF turning down, down turning from where I personally got in, I like to cut my losses. And then I like to re-enter potentially later on in the day. And uh, today would have been a great day to re-enter. And I could lie to you guys and say that I did re-enter and made my money back, but I'm not going to lie to you guys. I did not re-enter. I pretty much took that loss and stopped trading for the day. And uh, that's just the truth, right? So that's my loss on TVIX. You know, I got in a little bit too late here. You know, we were a little bit overbought on the RSI, pretty much really overbought. So I kind of jumped the gun. I got a little too excited and it bit me in the butt. So, you know, bad trading for me today, but again, that happens and I'm glad it happened because I've been having a couple of green days in a row and I needed this little bite in the butt to remind me that, you know, you're not going to be getting money. You're not going to be, uh, you know, getting, uh, what's it called? Positive percentage gains every single day. There's going to be some red days that occur and I'm happy that it happened. So to look at some other stocks and ETFs very quickly before I do end off today's video, let's take a look at Drip and Gush. A bunch of people in our group were actually able to trade Drip and Gush, and Gush and Drip were actually two that I called out in yesterday's video. For those of you guys that watched yesterday's video, I said that Gush had potential to push back up today closer to that, uh, what was it? I believe it was a resistance on XOP, and if you guys don't know the correlation, XOP trades or a gush rather and drip trade based upon XOP meaning whenever XOP is going up in price gush is going up in price and whenever uh, XOP is going down drip is going up so in yesterday's video I talked about how we saw a potential bottom in XOP and that based off of this trend, we noticed that the resistance was at the 50 SMA. And I thought, and you know, based off my technical judgment, I made a prediction that XOP could potentially go back up to that 50 SMA and get rejected. And that's kind of what it did pre-market hours today, guys. If we can see here, you know, pre-market, it did have a huge gap up and it shot up even more, you know, heading into the, the middle of the market market right at about 12 1 p.m eastern standard time and you know that's where we ended up getting rejected right under that 50 sma on this 184 hour chart a little bit you know under it but you know still you know in the same vicinity as that one uh the 50 simple moving average so you know i didn't trade gush and drip but again a bunch of people in our group were able to trade them and uh gush shot up to 13 dollars and 66 cents today and you know it went down as the market's uh, went down as they start to sell off and you know they don't technically relate to the markets but you know typically when the markets are going up you know gush is do is doing well and uh, going up in price but when the markets are selling off vice versa you know drips going up and uh, gush is going down that's exactly what we've been seeing in the past couple of uh, months pretty much since the October sell-off and uh, you know tomorrow guys it all depends on what the market does is the market going to be selling off which means that we could potentially profit on drip 
or is the market going to break those, um, you know, uh, the, the uh, what's it called, the uh, 50 SMA resistances? Are we going to start to push up and have a couple more green days, which would be very good for drip, uh, not, not drip, rather, gush, in my personal opinion. So, you know, just like every day, guys, again, I talk about this all the time. It kind of gets repetitive, but, you know, we do get a lot of new viewers every single day. You know, I'm trading a bunch of the same ETFs and stocks on a day-to-day -day basis because this is what I've seen success with over the past couple of trading years that I've been on the markets that I've had, you know, experience with, right? What's the point of trying to trade new things all the time when what you're already trading is working, right? So that's what I've been doing and that's what I'm sticking to. And, uh, you know, that's what I've been trading, you know, gush drip are two of the main ones that I trade. We saw a huge sell off today in natural gas. Actually, guys, check out, take a look at this. It completely broke that wedge to the downside. And I was talking about this in yesterday's video, guys, because in yesterday's video, I believe we were at this point in terms of natural gas. And I was saying that, are we going to break below this? Right? Are we going to break below the support on this wedge to break that pattern and start a downwards trending pattern? Or are we going to bounce here and pretty much pop up and break above the resistance, which would be a crazy bull sign, uh, bullish indicator, right? And uh, we pretty much did the first thing, which was break below the support and uh, start a new downtrending pattern from where natural gas was yesterday. And obviously, guys, with natural gas being down 7% today, DGAS was on fire, right? DGAS was absolutely on fire, and we can see that here based off this chart. Up 16% today, up $9. So whoever was able to capitalize on that, congrats to you. Very, very solid move there in terms of uh, DGAS. And let's take a look at Facebook, guys, because I did talk about this a little bit earlier in the video. But Facebook is one, is a stock right now that is, you know, breaking a very strong technical barrier here on the 180 chart. So obviously... You know, judging, uh, uh, you know, a couple months back on Facebook, we had, we've had a bunch of drama, right? We've had, you know, data leaks, the, uh, you know, uh, Cambridge Analytica, all these different things. You know, Zuckerberg has been interviewed by the, you know, the government. He's been all over the news, right? All these different things that have been happening. That's crushed the stock, right? From 220 all the way down to 126. That's nearly a 100-point drop, right? And we noticed through this whole time, it's been getting rejected by that 180 simple moving average here on the 180 day four hour chart. So the fact that we're breaking up here, you know, we're breaking out of that is a very good sign that this could be a reverse in trend and we could potentially start to push back up in terms of Facebook stock. So I'm very, very excited about this because, you know, this is one of my long term investments. I've been buying it over the past couple of months. I slowly start to scale in at around 170, bought more at 160, bought more at about the recent price I bought at, I think was at about 135. I bought a couple more shares. So, you know, I've been buying this one over the past couple of months and I'm really, really Really excited to see what it's going to do in the short term and the long term in terms of its price. So, you know, I don't want to keep you guys too long. You know, inverse ETFs, you know what I'm watching, guys. Drip, Gush, you guys, D gas, LABD, LABU for tomorrow. You know, the stocks I'm going to be watching. I'm going to see if Facebook can have another strong day tomorrow. Uh, you know, maybe I could potentially trade that in my swing account. You know, um, ah. Uh, I don't know about it because again, you know, the markets are at a technical spot right now where it could they could potentially get rejected. So I want to be careful because you know if the markets do get rejected uh, and start to go down in price tomorrow, you know, Facebook's most likely going to get rejected here as well and have a red day. But again, you know, I'm keeping all my options open and waiting until pre-market hours to see what happens. So in yesterday's video, I said to leave a comment for uh, staying all the way to the end, and I was actually surprised. How many people stayed to the end? That's actually mind-blowing to me. So I really, really appreciate all you guys that stayed to the end of my videos. I really want to just thank you personally. I really, really appreciate it, guys. And I hope you do find some value in these videos. I hope they really do help you because that's my mission. That's my goal with this YouTube channel. I'm so happy that I've been able to help a bunch of people, literally hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of people over the past couple of months with trading, investing. It just... It, it brings warmth to my heart. I just love helping people and, uh, you know, just sharing my experience, sharing my journey. And I really do appreciate all you guys that really do stay down to the end of these videos because they are pretty long. They're pretty long, 20 minutes some of the times, you know, 25 minutes. 
And uh, that's a pretty decent amount of time, guys. So I really do appreciate it. You know, kicking back, hanging out with me, talking about stocks, you know, checking out the videos. I really, really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Again, stay connected with all the links down below in the description box. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.